All right, welcome to our section on symmetry. There are three types of symmetry that we're going to study. We're going to talk about the idea of symmetry about the x-axis, symmetry about the y-axis, and symmetry about the origin. So one of the things that you're going to need uh, with this is you're going to need your graphing calculator. Now, uh, for the interest of the notes, I'll have the graph provided, but you do need to know how to get the graph on your graphing calculator so that you can compare. And the idea here is so that you have a general idea of what type of symmetry the equation possesses. Now, we will test it algebraically, so understand that concept. All right, there are three types of symmetry that we have to be aware of. The very first one is our symmetry about the x-axis. Now, the big idea here is that for every point on the graph for x comma y, there is another point on the graph that has the same x value but the exact opposite y value. So you see that here with 1, 1 and notice 1 comma negative 1. Right? So the x values are the same but the y's are opposites. In, in our second type of symmetry with uh, symmetry about the y-axis, for every point that we have, x comma y, we have the same y value but a different x value, and the x value is the exact opposite. Again, you see an example up here in the graph with uh, negative 2, 4, and then positive 2, 4. And understand this idea because this is what we're going to use uh, in order to test. We're going to use the idea of the opposite x value. Okay, and notice that uh, it's symmetric about the y-axis. All right, and the last type of symmetry that we have to be aware of is symmetry about the origin. And as you can see here, every point x comma y has an exact opposite negative x comma negative y. Uh, you'll see that in the two points that are presented here. Okay. All right, so here is one of the things that you're going to have to be able to do. Okay, you're given the endpoints of a line segment AB. You're supposed to sketch AB about the x-axis and then about the y-axis. All right, to start, let's just sketch AB. So we've got the point 2, comma, 1. We've got the point 5, comma, 4. And it looks like we've got this line right here. All right, so if I want to start by doing a sketch about the x-axis, well, remember, as we said above, that means I have the same x value points, but I have opposite y values. So therefore, my point 2 comma 1 is going to become 2 comma negative 1. So I have a point right here. And then my point 5 comma 4 becomes the point 5 comma negative 4. And so if I go across 5 and down to negative 4, and now I've got the sketch of the line that is symmetric about the x-axis. All right, and if I do the same thing with symmetry about the y-axis, okay, this time my x values are going to become their opposites, but the y values are going to stay the same. So the point 2 comma 1 now becomes negative 2 comma positive 1. So negative 2, 1 ends up being right there. And the point 5 comma 4 now becomes the point negative 5 comma positive 4. And that would end up being right there. And then we got it. All right. So now we have uh, the original sketch. We have the red one, which is symmetric about the x-axis, and the blue one, which is symmetric about the y-axis. All right, on to page two. All right, so uh, as I said, the other thing that we're going to have to do is we're going to have to graph a, an equation and then determine what type of symmetry it possesses. So there are three types of, uh, or three tests that we're going to use for symmetry. So as we saw in our graphing on the first example, if I want to test symmetry about the y-axis, well, remember that symmetry about the y-axis means that the uh, y value is staying the same, but the x's are opposite. So all we're going to do is change x to negative x, and if we get the same equation, it works. And then when we want to test symmetry about the x-axis, we're going to change the y value to its opposite, and again, see if it works. And then if we want to test about the origin, that means we have to use both a negative x and a negative y. All right, so in example two, you're given the following equation. 
You're supposed to graph this on your graphing calculator. If you do not know how to do that, please make sure that you ask at the beginning of class tomorrow, and we can make sure that you are able to do that. Now, the reason for that is now that I see the graph, I see it looks like it could be symmetric about the y-axis, but I'm not going to assume. So I'm going to use algebra here. And so what we said was if I take my equation and if I change all of my x values to negative x's, so I'm going to put a negative x to the fourth power and then minus 3 to a negative x quantity squared plus 1. If the equation stays the same when I simplify, then that means it is symmetric about the y-axis. So let's simplify this. Well, we know that any negative raised to an even power becomes positive, so that means this is x to the fourth, and the same is going to be true here. A negative raised to an even power of 2 means that this stays negative 3x squared and then plus 1. The equation did not change, so check. It is symmetric about the y-axis. So it's symmetric about the y-axis. All right? So in example number three, we're going to do the same thing. So you take your equation, type this into your graphing calculator. When you hit graph, you should get something that is similar to what you see here. Now based upon the way it is presented, it looks as though it could be symmetric about the x-axis. So we said if it is symmetric about the x-axis, notice that the x values of any two points on uh, this graph would be the same, but the y values would be different. One would be positive, one would be negative. So what we're going to do is we're going to change our y's to, um, to a negative and then go from there. Okay? So x is equal to a negative y quantity squared minus a 1 tenth times a negative y and then minus 15. All right, when I go to simplify this, I end up with x equal to, well, a negative y quantity squared would become a y squared. This negative times a negative, though, is going to become a positive one-tenth y, and then minus 15. So this equation that we had at the beginning does not match this equation, so therefore it is not symmetric about the x-axis. Okay? So even though it might look that way, we still have to uh, test it. And that's what we're going to do algebraically. All right, come with questions tomorrow.